Hey guys, Anthony DeMedico, CEO and founder of SBG Storm Ventures Group. I'm here with Lindsay Douglas with the Insurance Claim Advantage out of Houston, hey. Texas. Hey guys, glad to be here. She don't have the uh, Texas draw. Where's the Texas draw, y'all? Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we're here, uh, you know, I spent a couple weeks in Texas about a month ago with quite a few contractors. Uh, we had a record billion, was a it might be two or three billion plus. Do you have any idea on that, Lindsay? Between San Antonio yeah, and Dallas? Yeah, um, some of the reports coming back for the San Antonio losses, they're projected to pay out over one and a half billion just from that one date of loss. Then they had a second one. Mm -hmm. And then Dallas Fort Worth had three uh, within just a, you know, a month period. So I'm suspecting anywhere. Four billion or so in just the last few months. Now you're a licensed PA in Texas, correct? I'm a licensed public insurance adjuster in the state of Texas. That's Texas. correct. So one of the things, uh, you know, one of the things that's it's uh, it's an industry challenge. I actually had an interview not too long ago with uh, Kevin Burpee. You know, Kevin with Pride. Yeah. We were talking about let's let, let's take the state of Texas for example. You know, there's 780 licensed public adjusters in the state of Texas. I actually got that stat from one of your, one of your deals. Uh, that includes residents and non-residents, correct? Correct. So you just mentioned, so we just talked about, you know, there's a record year, a four, four, maybe $5 billion hailstorm that just hit, you know, San Antonio and Dallas. We're talking about well over 500,000 properties affected, residential properties, maybe, maybe close to, to 800,000 to a million, correct? It's hundreds of thousands hundreds of properties of thousands, affected. Of thousands, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And the average claim size and hail, you know, if it's roof only or whatnot, we're probably talking about somewhere between ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, correct? I would say for your average size homes, ten to twenty, if it's roof only would be right in line. Okay. Now with that many well, I should say with that little amount of public adjusters, licensed public adjusters, and most of the ones and I talked to a lot from Texas like yourself, talked to quite a few guys. Most of them, uh, a lot of them are booked into that Wind Storm conference that we're throwing in Miami Beach. A lot of these guys service commercial and they service residential 50,000 plus. Um, being that 95% of those claims that hit that storm are under the $50,000 amount, what would you say to all those property owners? What do you say to all the insurance restoration contractors that are operating in that segment um, when, when there's this, this divisiveness about the PA accusations, about you know instructing someone to file a claim, talking to somebody about a claim and property damage? If there's no public adjusters to service that segment, which is a pretty large one, correct? How do you how do we recognize correct. that? How do we talk about that in industry? Because it's it's an industry issue. It's not just Texas. Texas Texas just happens to be exponentially uh, making it a large issue. But how do you how do you how do you address that issue as a PA? What what's your, what are you, what's your well, opinion? It's the catch-22 because basically there's not enough public adjusters to service the entire need for claim handling and the contractors are out there they're the first line after the storm so uh it's one of those things that i think on a state-by-state -state basis it's really important to have a, a lawyer help you understand what constitutes acting as a public adjuster without a license and also uh, looking into your Department of Insurance in the state you're located to see if there's any specific uh, information on that. I know the Texas Department of Insurance has a frequently asked uh, questions uh, written out that says that the contractor can go and write the estimates and discuss those estimates with the consumer and the insurance company. But I think you're going to have to go by a state by state uh, analysis because essentially if there is public adjuster licensing in the state, that's an insurance code, which is a law. And this can be a legal interpretation. Um, and my lawyer in Texas has uh, given me some interpretations. And it, the, the code is so broad that it, it's very dangerous for a contractor to be working on the claim. In fact, right. we have currently a lot of political issues going on with legislation changes that luckily weren't passed last session. Um, we have class actions being certified against uh, Texas contractors. It's a scary time to be a contractor. 
it, it's a place like it, taxes it's a scary time i mean it's like you know there's and you hit on the, the spot there's really no education it's not like contractors are educated on hey this is what you're supposed to say when you when you answer that emergency call that leak call in the middle of the night here's what you're supposed to say, here's what you're not so guys are kind of falling into this 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 conundrum because there's nobody there's no pa service in that segment this, let me give an example if if, a, if, a, if mrs smith called at midnight and i'm a roofing contractor in texas or somewhere else Hey, my, my half my roof blew off. Hurricane force winds. Uh, come out, you know. I need a tarp. And you in your contractor, you come out, you, you throw a tarp up. You realize there's a hurricane in the neighborhood. Maybe Mrs. Smith doesn't know that. Yeah, you know, she has you know coverage for wind damage or hurricane. There's 30 missing shingles. It ripped something up. There's a leak. Um, if I'm a contractor, I'm probably going to instruct Mrs. Smith. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and do an emergency repair. Uh, but you pro might want to call your insurance company and come take a look because this roof is, you know, totaled out. You're going to need to have your insurance company look. Uh, we're also need to get authorization to do emergency repair and get some kind of dollar amount. Now, I would, you know, it's midnight. I would have to advise her on that as a contractor. Now, depending on who you talk to in the industry, that conversation right there could be considered crossing the lines. Yet for that conversation not to happen is kind of ludicrous. Right, that's where the, the catch the twenty two is like what happens in standard practice and reality <laughs> versus what the law says. Right. And so this is why I think it's paramount for contractors to come educate themselves at the Wind the Storm conference in Miami because these are the issues that we're going to be uh, sharing our opinions on and the legal opinions we've had research regarding this issue. And I think that you know, as a contractor in this environment, it need it. It's a must attend. You need to come. Well, one of the things you know, SBG does. We want to teach guys how to do things. We want. Hey, first of all, we want to teach guys how to make money, guys and guys. Right. We like we like to teach them how to scale, how to make money. But obviously, we want to teach them how to do things the right way. Um, but as a contractor myself, 15 years in the insurance restoration side, I just know the reality on the streets. And when you apply it to the stats, the statistics, like in taxes, you know. We all know there's no public adjuster to service those market segments. It's created this vacuum of opportunity. It's, com it's compelled a lot of contractors to operate in that segment because there's nobody else there. And so we have to, as we, as we, as we teach these guys to do things the right way, we also have to acknowledge as industry leaders, and, and, and that includes uh, attorneys, public adjusters, contractors, associations, state lawmakers, that there's this overlying issue in the industry that nobody's servicing that segment. Now, that's not something for you and I to solve. We're going to try to teach you guys how to walk and talk the right way, obviously, so they don't get in trouble. Right. But we have to. Somebody needs to take a stance here and let people, let folks know that there is that, that, that vacuum out there that needs to, you know, and there's nobody in the segment. And, and, and somebody has to fill it. Otherwise, Mrs. Smith is left hanging high and dry. You with me? I 100% agree. I mean, most consumers don't even know to call a public adjuster. They don't even know what it is. So some don't uh, even know how to I, call an insurance claim in. You know, exactly. I've, I've a There's a lack a lack, like a lack of education. Um, I think most of the contractors that I do business with want to follow the rules. They just want to know what those rules are and have it be, you know, black and white clear. And, and here's, here's the other industry problem, Lindsay is Go to a state like Illinois. I had I, I was a contractor there for several years. I had, had an office there for almost ten years. You know, Illinois, you can actually act. You can actually be licensed as a public adjuster, and you can be the restoration contractor under the same roof. So you literally go out with your PA contract and your restoration contract, uh, which is unlike any other state that I've seen. Um, so you have a you know as you go from state to state, if you're a contractor, see I was in eighteen states, so I ran into a lot of different rules in different states. You have an inconsistency from state to state, and then there's some states. Uh, especially in the southeast that don't even have uh, licensed public adjusters or, or certification. So it's uh, there's not really a lot of consistency across the uh, across the U.S. as a playing field. I, I agree. I think Illinois has this hybrid uh, method going on where as long as you get your public adjuster license and then you have your contractor license and you set up the contracts per the terms of the, the state laws, then you are in compliance and you're, or you are able to negotiate and represent the client's interests. I think that other states could follow suit and this could be a great way to, um, you know, fill the gap, actually. You hit the nail on the head because there'll, 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 there'll never be enough licensed public adjusters to fill that segment. 
So the only the only alternative way to look at that, if you're a state lawmaker, you know, and I'm not you know, a state lawmaker, is is to probably look at what's going on in Illinois and and maybe make that the protocol for the rest of the country because now you have guys that are being trained and educated and following a certain process to advise customers and they can actually fill that segment from zero to fifty thousand across hundreds of thousands of property owners because if you don't acknowledge it and you don't allow them to do that as a contractor, you're back to the average insurance restoration contractor who's not certified who's going to be compelled to fill in that segment anyways. You understand? Right. And, you know, I think it's great that they even license contractors. I wish here in Texas we did the same. So we have, you know, some growing to do as a state. We have the least, you know, amount of public adjusters per consumer than most states. And the supply and demand is all out of whack. We are one of the biggest states when it comes to severe weather, yet we don't have the resources as public adjusters in quantity and volume to handle these types of issues. So then we kind of whittle down the criteria to only large losses because there's only so much time in the day. So that, hours. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, we have this contractor workforce that uh, is a natural extension of us. And if we could work with um, you know, like Illinois state laws are doing with the public adjuster able to also be the contractor on the same claim. That's a wonderful idea to explore. I, I am um, definitely intrigued by that. It, it's a hybrid. It's not something you see in a lot of other states. So um, I think the biggest thing is coming together as an industry, aligning interests, doing what's best for the consumer every time and making sure that we help even out the playing field because the insurance companies are, you know, it, you know, they have the advantage. They write the policies, they collect the premiums and they decide how much to pay out in claims. So I think, um, you know, not treating each other like enemies you know, public adjuster versus contractor, us versus them. I think we need to bridge those gaps and and focus on education and solutions because our consumers need our help. Yeah, and that's exactly what, you know, I know you're coming back. You've been to win the storm uh, three years in a row now. Uh, contractors love to hear you as a speaker because, you know, they hear about these things that we're talking about how to get compliant and how to, you know, how to better do their job. So they're making money, but they're also following a, uh, you know, some compliance out there and that's what guys want. And uh, so we're excited to have you back. And these are, these are some of the issues that we're going to talk about. We're going to be open about them. We're going to talk about them and, and hopefully come up with some solutions uh, and present those at wind of storm uh, February 16th, 17th, 18th at Miami beach. I'm super, super excited to be back again. And I know that, the feedback on the presentations that I've given have been unbelievable. The contractors have, you know, written to me saying how much they learned and how much they value they got by attending Win the Storm. And I would just like to invite you all to come because this is going to be an event you cannot afford to miss. We're, look, we're look, looking forward to having you there. We're also uh, we've got a lot of fun factory events planned for that Saturday and Sunday. So hopefully some of the guys can meet you, up, meet you out on some of the deep sea fishing tours or, I, or yacht I, I want to show my fishing skills. You know, <laughs> I grew up in Florida and and I love to fish and I love I love the beach. So I'm getting to uh, go back to my home state and um, you know get to have fun right there in Miami. I used to live down there, so I'm excited. That's the location. By the way, they got the Miami Boat Show. The annual boat show is going on that same weekend. And they got the uh, Cuban, the annual Cuban food festival there is going on as well. So it's going to be a great weekend. We're looking forward to it. The weather's going to be unbelievable during that time of year too. So all you contractors out there in the snow during February, just bring your bathing suit and get ready to have fun while you get to learn and uh, be able to learn how to scale your company and make money. That's what we're all doing. So, hey, Lindsay, remind me to send you a couple of these. These are some two-for-one tickets you can send out to some of your favorite contractor clients or some of your public adjuster associates. Uh, more the merrier. Um, look forward to seeing you. Have a, have a good week. Thanks.